Okay, hello. This is part three to determine the descend time for the cycloid of Bacristochrome. In part one, we derived the equation for the Bacristochrome, and in part two, we derived the arc length of the Bacristochrome. Links to both of these videos will be in the below links. Here we have a diagram of our issue. We have a circle rolling along a flat plane. On the center of that circle, A, we locate a point P. As the circle rolls from zero to B, point P moves from B to point P. We have located that point from the center of the circle, which is R cosine theta and R times sine theta. And the distance from zero to the center of the circle is OB. And the distance from uh, zero to the point P is X, and the distance from zero to Y to the point P is Y. So therefore, that gives out brachistochrome equations. X equals R times the quantity theta minus sine theta, quantity closed. Y equals R times quantity one minus cosine theta, quantity closed. If you still have an issue with these, or you're kind of fuzzy on how we determined these, please click video part one and refresh on that part. Now that we have part P in terms of X and Y, we can calculate the time required to descend along the curve being traced. Let's continue. Let's first look at the curve again, then we'll derive the formula drive the time t formula. Okay, here's our animation. We have a rolling circle that rolls along a flat plane and it tracks out the our brachistochrome. So let's see how that looks here. Get that animation started. Started at zero. There you go. I'll let you see it. Draw it out. That's our brachistochrome. So it starts out at zero and it traces out our brachistochrome curve from zero to W and then from W to H. The height from the bottom of the brachistochrome to the top we call Y. And the total length of the brachistochrome from top to bottom and from bottom to top again, we call length equals L. Okay. Okay, let's get started and look at uh, the remainder of our video. Okay, just as in previous videos, we start with the distance formula in rectangular form as below. dx, dy, ds. So ds squared, the Pythagorean TM, dx squared plus dy squared equals ds squared. Take the square root of both sides, and we factor out the dx term under the square root sign. We factor out the dx squared term, and that leaves us dx squared times the quantity 1 plus dy dx squared. Okay. Let's continue. Divide the last equation by dt. Here's our previous equation. We divide that equation by dt. Well, ds over dt is equal to the velocity. So, therefore... We have velocity equals the square root of the quantity 1 plus dy dx squared divided by dt times dx. We integrate both sides. We integrate t from dt from 0 to t and the other quantity on the right from 0 to s. Therefore, we end up with this quantity for time. Let's continue. 
Here's our previous equation. We had time is equal to the integral from 0 to s of the quantity square root of 1 plus dy over dx squared, ds squared times dx divided by v, velocity. Now, what is this velocity? Well, the conservation of mechanical energy in the fall from g, g to w, that's our brachistochrome, potential energy equals the kinetic energy. So, we have mgy is equal to mv squared over 2. And velocity squared is equal to 2g times y. Both masses cancel. And we multiply by 2. So velocity is equal to square root of 2gy. And that's where the velocity comes from. Let's continue. In our previous slide, as below, this is the equation Isaac Newton derived in 1697 to solve the brachistochrome problem given by Johann de Moulin. This is the equation we just derived. Problems of these type led to the development of the calculus of variations. Let's continue. Remember our location equation in x and y, as below. Yeah. We need to take derivatives of those with respect to theta. Here's our x. We multiply through by r. So we get r theta minus r sine theta. Then we take the derivative of x with respect to theta, and we get dx over d theta equals r times 1 minus cosine theta. The derivative of y with respect to theta, we multiply r through. We get r minus r cosine theta. dy d theta equals r sine theta. dy over dx is equal to dy over d theta divided by dx over d theta. Now plug the above expression into the below equation. Remember our time equation was this. So here is this equation. We'll plug it into that. So we plug dy dx into here, and we get this. We simplify this equation to this. Let's continue. Now square the square root of the denominator. Okay, we take the square root of the denominator. Well, the square root of a square is just the term inside. So therefore, I took the square root and I inverted the the denominator. The dx's cancel out. You see now why you need to be good in algebra. So we just inverted dx over d theta, and then the dx is canceled. And we get time is the integral from now from 0 to theta of the square root of dx over d theta plus dy over d theta, dx over d theta squared plus dy over d theta squared divided by the square root of 2gy times d theta. Let's continue. Here's our previous equation for the descend time. Let's integrate this. So we have these two terms right there, and y. Let's continue. Here's our previous equation. Remember those, remember those derivatives we took? Well, there they are, and that's what we have to replace. And the y. Plug them into the integral. So we separate the square roots. Then we plug in our y's and our dy d theta and dx d theta. 
Now perform the squaring operation and plug in Y. So here's Y. We plugged it in and we did the squaring. Cosine squared plus theta squared is equal to 1. And the square root of R squared is equal to R. Square root of R squared right there is equal to R. Plug into the above equation and simplify. So we took the square root of R, which is R, and we pulled out the square root of R right there. And here's our square root 2g right there. And leave this equation. Well, in order to simplify r over the square root of r, we multiply top and bottom by the square root of r. Okay, square root of r times the square root of r is equal to r. So those r is canceled, leaving a square root at the top. Okay. Let's continue. Here's our previous equation. Now, here's one trigonometric identity you learned in class if you do your homework. Cosine 2 theta is equal to the quantity 1 minus 2 times the sine squared theta. Plug this in for cosine theta right there. So we're going to use cosine 2 theta where cosine theta is located. Here's our previous equation. Cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Plug that in for cosine. We plug that in. We multiply through by 2. 2 times, two times 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 minus 2 is 0. That leaves the square root of 4 sine squared theta divided by the square root of 2 sine squared theta. Here's our previous equation. Remember we substituted cosine 2 theta for cosine theta? Well, we have to correct that. So 2 theta is equal to theta, then theta is equal to square root, theta is equal to theta over 2. So we plug theta over 2 in for theta, right there. Well, the square root of sine squared theta over 2 divided by the sine squared theta over 2 is just 1. We take out the square root of 4, and we take out the square root of 2. Okay. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2. Square root of 4 is 2, so 2's cancel. And then this leaves square root of R and G. These divided the two square roots of sine theta squared, sine squared, Theta over 2 cancel. And that leaves us t is equal to square root of r divided by g from a times the integral from 0 to theta, d theta. Let's continue. Here's our previous equation. Integrate theta from 0 to pi to the bottom of the brachistochrome. So first we're going to find out from 0 to pi the time from the top to the bottom of the Brachistochrome. That comes out to t times t is equal to the square root of r over g times pi. Top time from top to bottom of the brachistochrome. T is equal to pi times the square root of r divided by g. Now let's find out the time taken from the top to the bottom, back to the top again, to return to the top. So we'll go from 0 to 2 pi. 2 compare sliding times across top L to times sliding from G to H across along full brachistochrome. We have L equals 2 pi times R, rolling circle circumference. R equals L over 2 pi because this is the circumference of the rolling circle. From 0 to 2 pi, we determined that we had 2 pi times the square root of r divided by g. And r is equal to L over 2 pi from the circumference of the rolling circle. Therefore, we replace r with L over 2 pi 
and we bring 2 pi inside of the square root sign, where it means we have to square both 4 and we square both 2 and pi, and we it makes that 4 and pi squared. Well, 2 it's pi divided by 4 pi squared leaves 2 pi squared. So therefore, t is equal to 2 pi l over g. Let's continue. Again, first let's look at the curve again. Okay, here's our curve again, and let's get this uh, animation going. So as you can see, we start out at zero, right there, and the B that's sliding goes to W, and leaves W at maximum speed velocity and goes to H, and then returns to W, and returns to zero. This is the end of part three, the descend time for the cycloid. It's not magic, it's the law. The next, next video is part four, derive the equation for the hypocycloid. Until next time, I hope you learned something.